welcome to the Gulf Coast Growth Show. I'm today's host, Chad Burke, with the Economic Alliance, and I'm very excited uh, to bring to you today Tim Sutherland, General Manager at the Chevron Pasadena Refining uh, Facility. And uh, we're just going to have a good conversation, get to know Tim a little bit better, and then talk a little bit about some of the really exciting things that you all have going on there in Pasadena. Um, but a lot of people, um, and I have heard this said specifically, are intimidated by general managers, site managers, plant managers. It's such an important position. So we want to learn a little bit about Tim uh, to start off with. So um, welcome again. And why don't we start off just by telling us a little bit about yourself, your hobbies, your family. Uh, understand you've got a son in the military. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've, I've got uh, a lot of siblings and, and brothers in the, in the military or have been, so that's a good thing too. But yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Good, yeah. Well, thanks, Chad. Um, so I grew up in California, uh, ultimately ended up going to the University of California, Davis, got a mechanical engineering degree, and then uh, went to a job fair, and people asked me why I went to work for Chevron. It was a very scientific, they paid more. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So it shows good judgment right off the bat. Well, I guess. But, uh, I didn't have a ton. I had a few, I had a few different opportunities. But anyways, uh, um, and then I just never really looked back, so... Um, I've, I've, uh, my wife and I, she's from, she's from Sacramento too. And, uh, we do, we have a son. And so we grew up about, oh, I worked in the Richmond refinery in California. So we were about 70, 80 miles away from my parents and her parents. Oh, nice. And so we kind of had a, not too close, but we had a good built in yeah. uh, system to help raise our son. So we have one son, uh, he's 25, he's in the army. Okay. Uh, he's been in a little over a year, and, and uh, he's made it through his third school, so he's waiting to go to his next school. Um, I think it's the 5th of, 5th of October or something. Yeah, like that's that. outstanding, and we, we appreciate him yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's interesting. He, you know, he went and got his degree. My wife and I really wanted to uh, at least get him to get his degree, so he did. He went to the University of Utah and played D1 rugby and stuff like that, but, oh, uh, but then he enlisted. Excellent. He didn't even go and to the officer just, path. And after he'd already been through. After he'd already been through. So, so, so uh, to relate, uh, my son um, went to the Naval Academy, had never played rugby in his life, mm -hmm. got talked into, and he was a football guy from yeah. Texas, yeah. got talked into <laughs> rugby at his, before his plebe summer at the academy, ended up starting three years on their Division I uh, oh, rugby wow. team. He's 27, so he's got a couple of years on your son. But... Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, you know, served his time in the Navy as, as well. And so he's out now. He's out now, Got yeah. It. But um, uh, but a rugby guy, right? I knew nothing about rugby, but by the time he got through, I was I was yelling and screaming, oh, yeah. ah, these are, you know, he's, he's offside. Yeah, or, totally, you know, he's, totally, yeah. Knock on. Knock on, knock on, right? You know, <laughs> totally. Nobody knows what we're talking about. But, no, uh, yeah, 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 but, uh, yeah so that, well, that's outstanding. That's yeah. outstanding. So how long did you all stay there in California? So this will it'll kind of blend between, uh, I guess, between my career. But uh, anyways, we. Um, so, again, I've stayed with Chevron the whole time. So I worked at the uh, Richmond Refinery, which mm -hmm. is just a little bit north and a little bit east of San Francisco. So it's, it's on the San Francisco Bay, but it's across the bay. Mm -hmm. So uh, a big complex facility, uh, waterborne cargo is a lot like the big ones here. Mm -hmm. A pretty complex lube oil plant. Um, but anyways, that, that's where I started. Started as an engineer, reliability engineer, and just yeah. worked my way up through turnarounds. And and uh, we were there 15 years. Okay. And you know, it was really interesting. From a, uh, I talked to people about this at work. You know, I man, I thought success was fifty thousand dollars and two yellow labs and shoot a pile of ducks every year. Yeah. And, and yeah. that was it. Um, and it was really interesting. Had a job offered to to me in Salt Lake City, maintenance manager, and uh, it was like the light switched. I just, I, uh, we knew where we'd be every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every opening of every season there was out there to hunt and fish, and wow. and, and uh, it was home. But I don't know, got the wanderlust or whatever. And then we've never stopped. Yeah, <laughs> we've never stopped. So um, moved to Salt Lake, and. Uh, I guess that's why your son ended up at Utah. Yeah, he looked at a bunch of different schools around rugby, but yeah, they have yeah. a good program. Yeah, they have oh a good yeah, program. Yeah. So we were there for five years, and and uh, that was a great assignment. Uh, just the Rocky Mountain West, and, yeah. and again, I'm a, I'm a hunter. If it if it uh, wasn't obvious, and 
So they have great elk hunting there. Yeah. We hunted Shiris moose there, and and uh, we, we and I picked up. My wife's a very good snow skier, and uh, we all picked that up as kind of a family deal. Sounds like a good hitch in, in Utah, right? A really good yeah. hitch. Yeah. It was a good job, leadership yeah. team. Um, so we were there for about five years, and then we transferred to Pascagoula, Mississippi. Okay. From the yeah. mountains to the coast. For, and, and I shed a tear, man. Yeah. It was uh, leaving those mountains. But Pascagoula is cool, too. Great, great offshore fishing and yep. um, a, a yeah. bit of duck hunting, a little bit of whitetail hunting. But yeah. uh, the fishing was probably the thing that was yeah. really unique. But then also the people. Our, uh, our facility in Pascagoula is one of the major draws. There's a, there's a shipyard there, too, Angles. But um, we just get very fortunate. We get the pick of the litter of the folks raising up in that area yeah, and so yeah from a people standpoint uh that place is a special place uh sounds like it for the for the employees so yeah. it's fun there excellent but then after pascagoula yeah so i wasn't in pascagoula a real long time we we uh um we had a big turn a big coke recruit unit turnaround pretty successful made a lot of change there and then um, and then we tran then we transferred to El Segundo refinery in Southern mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. So El Segundo is right next to LAX. Yeah. And so it's, uh, uh, I, man, growing up in Northern California, I never thought I'd live in Southern California. I was just like, it's, no way. Yeah. And I think it might've been our best assignment. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Um, the beach was right there. I walked to work every day. Nice. You know, I was not even a mile from the plant and, uh. It was wonderful. Wow. <laughs> if you don't have to drive. If you don't have to get in traffic, it's a great job. Right? Oh, man. Oh, wow. Well, that sounds awesome. So we were there for six years, and then and then uh, uh, we started looking at the Pasadena refinery, mm -hmm. and we we bought it. We, we uh, purchased it and took possession of it May 1st of 2019. So around, I guess this time in 2018, I started to get involved with the business development group, mm -hmm. and then... Ultimately, when we made the decision to purchase, I was the integration manager, and then they had me stay on as the general manager. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm the I'm currently the only person that's worked in all of our five wholly I'm owned facilities. You. Yeah, you've seen them all. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, so you're in Texas now. I know you like to hunt. We'll go back to hunting real quick. So, have you have you have you done any whitetail hunting in oh, Texas yeah. over your? Okay, yeah. you guys, we can say because if you haven't yet, uh, we're gonna have to go hunting together <laughs> this, this 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 fall coming up soon. Yeah. Um, but tell me a little bit real quick. So you've been on some hunts around the world. What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite kind of non-traditional hunt? Oh heck, I, I like to hunt the mountains. Yeah. I mean, spot um, and stalk and yeah, spot yeah. and stalk. I mean, had a very. Uh, there's a ranch in New Zealand that we hunted Ooh. with. A, yeah, we become good. My wife and I become good friends with this guy, uh, Scotty, in New Zealand, and he has a fallow deer ranch. That's uh, it reminds me a lot of mule deer hunting, but it's it's steep and mm -hmm. you can glass a long way as a spot and stock. Excellent. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh we'll yeah, to, we'll I got to, a hookup if you we'll want to go. We'll have to talk. say we'll have to talk a little bit later about that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you you covered some good questions here uh, about about your current role and and your path to get here. Um, let's let's dive in real quick and talk about this new LTO project that y'all have got going on. So first, um, explain what LTO means and and kind of how that's changed a little bit from what you what you had been doing there so i mean lto in our vernacular we just it's light tide oil yep. and so um, we're obviously a refining facility so we don't make light tide oil there but um, there, there were three main reasons why we purchased the facility and and the first one is to connect to our light tide oil reserves in the permian basin so in mm -hmm. west texas and and uh, new mexico and Chevron's got a big equity stake out there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just strategically, we said, hey, you know, we'd like to, uh, we'd like to monetize that crew directly mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, ensure, ensure a, a portion of that had a, always had a home. Yeah, and, no, that makes sense. And, and light tight is, is, um, is, is uh, crude that's coming out of the, the shell place. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, okay, so that's, yeah. that's the tight part, right? Um, so, uh, um, so, so, anyways, that, that, so that was the, the first, in my opinion, the primary reason we per the strategic reason we purchased it was to connect to that crude. Mm -hmm. The second was uh, Chevron is a little bit short. You know, we brand Chevron in Texaco, and we were a little bit of short. We were a little bit short on product, and so um, we 
that was a piece of it. Mm -hmm. If we have a refinery here, we can we can supply product directly. And then the last is I talked about that Pascagoula, Mississippi facility. Um, you know, there's synergies when you own a couple of different facilities, whether they're chemical plants or refineries, you can trade intermediates and take yeah. advantage sometimes with maintenance outages and stuff like mm -hmm, that. So, mm -hmm. so we've been pretty successful. Uh, we can talk about that more in a minute, but we've been pretty successful with that already, um, taking, taking advantage of that uh, proximity to another Chevron facility. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so basically the project... Um, you know, crude oil is the different, you know, you can't just take this refinery and put any crude oil exactly, into it. Right. right? Yep. And uh, uh, so uh, I don't know all the history of the of that uh, Pasadena refinery, but I, I, I heard anecdotally they used to run West Texas, or I'm sorry, West African crudes into mm, the facility. Okay. Yep. And uh, anyways, what we're targeting is a lighter crude. Yep. And so basically we've got some constraints in the facilities around uh, uh, that that lighter boiling point, the light gasoline boiling points. And so that's primarily what we're going to address is that bottleneck. So it's not really, we're not really uh, targeting an increase of overall throughputs versus historical, but it's to really target that lighter crude. Yeah. And so that's really what we're And, we're and did I read correctly, y'all are adding um, that will, that will uh, allow y'all to um, produce aviation fuel? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we'll be able to swing. Uh, we, we make, today we make uh, gasoline materials diesel materials mm -hmm. and uh we will we'll be able to swing that distillate between jet and diesel depending on on uh where the market's at and, and we will be certified to make finished diesel i'm sorry finished jet finished in the jet facility fuel. yeah excellent yep um so yeah so we uh part of the strategy with the project is is that that um we have idled and, and ultimately we're, we're going to make the decision not to restart our FCC and our alkylation units. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so the the, uh, the gas oils that used to go to those plants here locally in Pasadena, uh, currently they go to Pascagoula. So we actually ship them by, by uh, barge to Pascagoula. But, um, but regardless, right, it's a commodity we can trade here in Houston mm -hmm. one way or the other. And sure. so, I mean, the way we really the way we really thought of it is it's just a commodity and, and it yeah. has some value here in this market. If it makes more sense for Chevron, uh, for the enterprise, we'll continue to extend it to Pascagoula as long as it makes sense. Okay. But uh, yeah. that's one thing I've learned here. Uh, I mean, this really is the center of the hydrocarbon business. And, you know, you can say it, you can contemplate that but what when, it, when if you have a problem or you have a product or you need to buy something mm -hmm. whether it's material or 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 pro sell product or buy crude yeah you can get it here you can get it here yeah and that's not obviously the case Pascal, mississippi sure one <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> that's it you're the you're, you're, you're the guy right well that that's uh I, it's an exciting project it's exciting for me to kind of it kind of evolve through this this um you know the evolution of the shell revolution um, as as it came on, and then to see you know to hear the conversations early on about some of our refineries that were that were using um, different crude from di different parts of the world, yeah. different countries, um, and and that was what we were refining here. But then to hear uh, you know a, a project like this that's taking advantage of that proximity yeah. to to your production uh, in those plays is is really kind of neat to see how it all works together. I also like. Um, you know, a lot of people don't don't realize we talk about this a lot about kind of the the traffic um, on the Houston Ship Channel with about eight thousand large vessel movements each year, but about two hundred thousand barge movements, right? Yeah. And you mentioned y'all were taking that product, sending it to Pascagoula. Well, it goes in a barge yeah. down the Ship Channel to the intercoastal, yeah. and then down the intercoastal yeah. all the way to you know yeah. Pascagoula, right? Amazing, yeah. So um, it, it it shows the connectivity and really kind of the the magnitude of what happens in here, moving those liquid uh, petroleum oh, yeah. products via barge, yeah. you know, not just internally, but all the way up and even over to the, the yeah. East Coast, up the Mississippi yep. and things like that. So it's just- It it's, is an amazing place. It for really the, is. For, uh, to be in the hydrocarbon chemicals business. It's, I, I had no idea. Yeah, you, know, you hear about it, you talk about it, you can see all the numbers, but- Yeah, yeah. Until you actually go down and look at the chip channel. And, yes. uh, 
go down to the Monument Inn and sit yeah, there and watch the Yeah, sit there at lunch and, and, watch, <laughs> and, and, and watch a dozen ships go by you while yeah. you're eating lunch. Yeah. And uh, we, we um, at the Economic Alliance, we have the opportunity to entertain uh, prospective uh, investments and, and people from not just the other side of Houston, but really all over the world. We had a group in from, from New York uh, uh, yesterday and part of the day is is a is a driving trip around around right. the region, and they're like, "Whoa, because it take thirty minutes," and we're like, "No, it's going to take a couple hours." <laughs> yeah, know, anywhere just, you want to just go, yeah. uh, just to kind of get yeah. around, and they come back to the office and they're like, "Man, I never knew, right? Yeah. I just never knew." So, um, it's a, it's a it's a dynamic place that we're working in. Well, uh, that's exciting. We're looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to having you uh, speak at the at this year's um, Gulf Coast Industry Forum. I'll finish up with this. Um, you know, I know Chevron is a great partner in our in our communities and, and a good member to have. Um, give us an example of one of the things that uh, that you guys get to do or have done that uh, that you're proud of as a, as an economic as, as a Chevron kind of neighborhood partner type person. We've done a ton of stuff. We did a garden in Pasadena that I thought was pretty cool. We did a Habitat of Humanity for a Korean War veteran. Mm. Went his house was his. You know, I don't know if he's formally disabled, but he's an older guy and his house was a mess. And man, we had a big crew over there wow. and we fixed that. But you know, probably, uh, I, I don't know, there's so many cool things, but the Toys for Tots deal, we do it every year with Pasadena Fire Department. Mm -hmm. And I asked a couple of my guys, my my uh, big hitters, my turnaround guys, I said, hey, man, we got to go get, you know, 50 bikes or whatever. Well, they, you know, I think we're up to 150 now. Excellent, so, excellent. Uh, they've really got the, uh, well, they're just engaging everybody, you know, and it's the employees that are donating the bikes, right? It's yeah. not, it's, uh, yeah. so yeah, that's just cool. It's uh yeah, it's uh, that's that's new to me too. Really? You know, well, yeah, I've never, when, as the general manager, at least from my perspective, um, Rosnier, government affairs lady, deals with the direct connections. But I mean, I've got a good relationship with the mayor. I know, yeah. you know, uh, Commissioner Garcia pretty well. Yeah. Met the rest oh, yeah. of the representatives, yeah. and so getting into the community and and. Uh, you know, helping out where we can. It's new to me, and I do like it. Well, that's so. excellent. That's excellent. Uh, a, a good friend of mine, former plant manager, said uh, to me once. He said, "Chad, they these these communities allow us to operate in their backyards, right? And so we need to be good neighbors. And y'all have been an excellent neighbor. Um, and uh, and it's fun because it is. It's employees that live and work in this yeah. region, and they're kind of giving back to the region. Yeah. So we really, really appreciate uh, yeah. Chevron." I'm so excited about the LTO project. That's going to be that's going to be kind of fun to watch come to come to life. And uh, really appreciate you being on on with us today. And yeah. uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Maybe we'll maybe we need to hook up hunting. Make so, hunt. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> uh, well, that does it for today. We appreciate y'all watching uh, the Gulf Coast Growth Show. Um, just be sure and tune in and uh, like and subscribe. And uh, uh, we'll see y'all next time. Thank you a lot.